here at uh, ST and uh, who are you? Yeah, my name is uh, Jean-Philippe Perrin. I'm a director of marketing for uh, Box and Gateways Business Line, which is our main focus here in the TV Connect in London. So Box and Gateways is like set-top box. So this is set-top box. We are covering the total market of set-top box uh, from the traditional broadcast set-top box uh, that you can see everywhere. We have been there for a long time in that market. Uh, and as well to connected client, to server, to gateway, to Doxy's kind of uh, applications. You're one of the leaders in that market, no? Yes, we are uh, one of the early uh, pioneers of set-top box. Uh, we did the first uh, satellite set-top box when it was launched in Europe and USA. Then uh, we have been the, very active in the cable, as well in the pioneer of IPTV, mostly in Europe, and then deployment as well in emerging countries like India and China for cable. We have been very active in the set-top box for a long time. Have you also been active in the in the French uh, ADSL all-in-one box, the what's it called uh, that kind of box? Yes, the IPTV yeah. box. So yeah. we, we have some presence in uh, IPTV box. We have been in uh, the early IPTV uh, boxes, uh, for sure. And uh, using ARM. So since uh, this is our second generation ARM-based uh, CPU, we have done a first generation ARM, which was introduced in uh, 2011, which was a uh, code name early. And now we are introducing a new generation, which is called CAN on Monaco uh, SOC. It is based on the Cortex A9 uh, dual core, and as well it has a powerful GPU, uh, Mali 400 from, uh, from ARM. And it's a second generation based on these IPs, which is much more mature in terms of software, and as well much more cost competitive. So here he's showing Google TV support. There is Google TV running on the chat right now, right? Correct. So Google TV is uh, one of the various uh, software middleware stacks that we have ported on our CAN and Monaco uh, family. Uh, we have as well some uh, other software from Cisco, uh, Nagra, and as well we are supporting uh, RDK. And uh, we support Google TV, but we support as well just people which are using Android by itself, without the Google TV brand. So there's uh, all the Android stuff and the TV stuff and everything is overlaid and there's uh, in the box, there's HDMI in and out. So there is HDMI in and out. In this demonstration, we don't show you the HDMI in. We focus on the HDMI out. You receive the connection via the cable. So it's a kind of IPTV demo here in that case. And here you have the HDMI out, which is going to the TV. And you were saying there were some other solutions. So which one is the top solution right now on set-top box? So today we have uh, this solution. We have an HD solution. And we have as well an Ultra HD solution that we have introduced last year at IBC in September in, uh, in Amsterdam. Does that mean you do Ultra HD Android Google TV? Yes, uh, we can do uh, Ultra HD uh, Android Google TV, for sure. So, uh, uh, so is that the name of this chip or...? No, no, no. this is uh, just an example. Here we are showing that we go to uh, uh, a Chrome. This is a Chrome browser. We yeah. run it on the TV. And here we are going to the home uh, web page of ST. So this is a completely different product of ST. And here you have in the PIP running the TV. So maybe we... Uh, Exactly. Right here, there's an, there's an article about the Ultra HD. Yes. And uh, what's it called? Uh, so, so is it a different school of the same SOC? Or yes, it it's, a, a, it's, a, it's a based on the same architecture, but it's a more powerful architecture, which supports Ultra HD, and it supports as well HEVC. HEVC is the enabler of uh, Ultra HD, and here's the press release that we have done, and we have done yeah. various ones. We are testing interoperability of the various yeah. encoder company, and Vivo is an encoder company with our HEVC decoder. To, uh, to prepare the wide deployment of HEVC, which is reducing the bandwidth by a factor of 30, 40, 45 percent uh, compared to the traditional H.264. So, do you do, uh, do, you do what's called uh, uh, HEVC 4K? Yeah, Ultra HD is 4K. So, there is two different names for Ultra HD. 4K, so it's the HEVC codec. Is, yes. In full 4K, uh, all the. All yeah, the... it's a 4K uh, HEVC uh, decoder. It's not a codec, it's a decoder. Okay. And, and, and so, do you do also some stuff with what's it called? Uh, uh, do you do uh, transcoding, right? Yes. So and is, that, is that this SOC or So, we SOC? have two family of SOC which are based on similar architecture. One is a CAN SOC which is focused on the client. So, it's focused only on the decoding function. So it can be uh, HD HEVC, it can be as well Ultra HD HEVC. And then as well, we have a sister family, which is called the Monaco family. And the Monaco family include a very powerful transcoder. So the transcoder, this is uh, very useful in the market where you want to go from one format to another. Typical example is that you receive an MPEG-2 stream, which is interlaced, and you want to display it on a tablet. The screen of the tablet is progressive. So we are decoding the MPEG-2, 
we are deinterlacing it and re-encoding it in H.264 and sending that to the tablet. All in on real our, time. And this is done in real time and we can even serve more than one client at the same time. More than one. So, so it will be in the box at home where there will be a Wi-Fi hotspot and people can stream. Exactly. So typically you will have a powerful set-top box. This is quite a powerful one. It has a Wi-Fi and uh, you will send uh, the, the by Wi-Fi to, uh, to your phone or to your tablet on this kind of client. All right. So, uh, so looking forward to even like uh, like a, a lot of people using this. So, how, how many people are using transcoding and ultra HD? It's just starting, right? So, ultra HD is new. Okay. Yeah. Today, uh, there is the very first commercial service on ultra HD was launched by uh, Sony. It's uh, VOD services, but this is really uh, the beginning. Beginning. So, various, uh, especially OTT services, we expect will start first on uh, on ultra HD, and we expect some launches this year. Now for the mainstream broadcast of uh, Ultra HD, we are more talking about the, the Olympics uh, 2016 in Brazil or this kind of time frame for the early launch of uh, broadcast Ultra HD. It will take some time because the TV are still uh, fairly expensive. So before 2011 you were using MIPS or? So before, uh, before 2000, on, on still, still. Our, uh, yeah. our broadcast set of box are using uh, what we call the ST40, which is uh, a CPU which is based on the SH4 architecture. All right, so uh, here it is, uh, Google TV, Android, and uh, lots of more stuff coming out. Yes, for sure. We are supporting Google TV, but we are supporting as well, like I said, various other software ecosystem. So here we are in the IP, so we put Google TV, but in a cable show, you would, choose, you would, you would see some demo using RDK, which is very popular in the cable set-top box. And then uh, we have as well uh, software, which is more coming from the, the root of the set-top box, from Cisco, from uh, Nagra, from Open TV, which uh, we are supporting as well on this chipset. And when you said RDK, that means... Uh... Uh, this is the new uh, Linaro is launching the home group. Are you are you? Yes, working we are there? participating in that. So we are a member of uh, Linaro, and uh, we already uh, have active interaction with that. So RDK was initially launched uh, by a US cable operator, and now it's more and more, more working towards the, the Linaro on the open source uh, system. Do you think it's going to be huge the open RDK system? So we see uh, a big trend for RDK. RDK is more popular in the cable market, so here we are in an IP show, so we don't focus too much on RDK, but uh, in the cable market, definitely, we see a big future for RDK, and it's uh, another software track that we support aggressively on our CAN and Monaco uh, SOC. Yeah.